Hey, it's Trish here, and I've got a cool little tool that we can do with uh, ChatGPT. So this is going to be using the brand new Code Interpreter plugin, which just launched uh, or became publicly available for GPT-4 through ChatGPT. So you can see that I'm actually logged into ChatGPT right now. I can pick the GPT-4 model, and then I can come down on the dropdown and I can pick the Code Interpreter beta. So you've got to turn this on in your options. Now, what I want to be able to do with this is I actually want to be able to do uh, measurement around training effectiveness. So this is one of the things that we deal with all the time with uh, learning and performance consultants and learning experience designers. So what we want to know is, and what they want to know, is whether or not their training is effective. And so the way that we can do that is that if we introduced, as an example, pre and post uh, tests to training, right? So going ahead and having learners take a pre-test before it is that they uh, take the training and then having them take the same post-test after the training. Uh, and then we can actually run statistical analysis of those scores to find out uh, if, number one, there's been any kind of knowledge gain and number two, if there's any kind of knowledge retention. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the best uh, practices is to go ahead and retest again, not only a post-test immediately following the training, but also to do another test uh, 30 days later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask uh, ChatGPT to go ahead and help us out using the code interpreter. So to start with, I am going to copy and paste in a prompt that I like to use for this. It basically just says, you know, hi, I'm a teacher. I always greet it. <laughs> It's just the way that I work with it. Uh, and I'm telling it, I have an Excel file containing three sets of students' test scores, including pre-test, post-test, and 30 days after training. I'd like to use a paired t-test to determine if A, knowledge was gained, and B, if knowledge was retained over time. And I'm asking it, can it help me? Okay, so I go ahead and click, and it comes back with a cool little response here. So it's asking me to go ahead and upload the Excel file. And you can see that uh, one of the things that I've got right here is actually a plus sign, which is going to allow me to upload the file. So let me go ahead and do that. And here we go. And I have uploaded the file. Click on the button. And it runs its first analysis of the general data. Gives us an idea of what the data looks like, a little bit of a preview. And then it actually runs the t-tests. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Okay, so the first comparison is between the pre-test scores and the post-test scores, right? So the, the pre-tests that were taken immediately before the training and then the post-tests that were taken immediately following the training. And it's saying that there is a negative T statistic. And uh, so in that first uh, statistical analysis, let me scroll back up here. So it's saying that there's a negative uh, T statistic, which suggests that the post-test scores are higher than the pre-test scores on average. Furthermore, it also gives us the p-value. It says the p-value is less than the commonly used significant level of 0.05, which means we reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis that there's no difference in the means of pretest and post-test scores, we're rejecting that because the p-value actually came back less than 0.05. So in other words, what it's telling us is that it provides strong evidence that the knowledge was gained as the, the post-test scores are significantly higher than the pretest scores. So it's saying that because of the p-value, that's not by random chance. Okay, awesome. So that's cool. So that's the first thing that has to happen in learning. And that's the first thing that we can test for is was new knowledge acquired? Because if people didn't learn anything, um, then our training was not effective. So first order of priority is that they had to learn something new. All right, so it looks like knowledge was definitely gained 
And again, the statistical analysis came back and it said, it looks like that that wasn't just random chance that, um, you know, something is, is contributing to that. All right. So then the next thing it did was it performed the second t-test. So here's the second statistical analysis to find out about knowledge retention, right? So we looked at knowledge gained was the first test. Now knowledge retention. So we had the students go ahead and take the test again 30 days after training had ended. And in this particular case, it came back and it said the T statistic between the post test scores and the scores 30 days after is positive with a P value of 0.017. So what it's coming back and it's saying is that the post, the positive T statistic suggests that the post test scores are higher than the scores 30 days after the workshop on average. So that means if the post test scores are higher than 30 days after the workshop, then what that means is um, that knowledge was lost, that knowledge was lost, right? So not the knowledge was not retained. So what, what, whatever was gained between the pre and post test with the training in between, 30 days later, we now have a decrease in knowledge. And we can also see from the p-value that this is also statistically significant, saying that that's also not random chance. So that's showing us that we're actually um, we're actually decreasing the knowledge retention, that, that knowledge is not being retained over time. All right, so here's where we can ask it again. What about a paired t-test? for 30 days after and pre-test, what would that tell us? Okay, so we can run a third statistical analysis. We can take um, a paired t-test between the 30 days after the workshop and then also the um, pre-test scores just to test this a little bit further. And basically it comes back and it says um, that the negative T statistic suggests that the scores 30 days after the workshop are higher than the pre-test scores on average. However, the p-value is greater than the commonly used significance level of 0.05. This means that essentially there's no difference in the means of the pre-test scores and the scores 30 days after the workshop. So in other words, this result provides no strong statistical evidence to suggest that the scores 30 days after the workshop are significantly different than the pretest scores. Despite the decrease in scores from the post-test to 30 days after the workshop, it seems that overall the students' scores did not change significantly from the pretest to 30 days after the workshop. So we're really talking about quite a bit of scrap learning because again, um, we're no better than where the students were before it is that they took the training. So this is how it is that we can run statistical analyses, which is crazy, uh, using ChatGPT and the code interpreter program in order to be, or the plugin rather, in order to be able to run um, these types of analyses against our training data to find out if our training is effective or not. Yay cake.